good afternoon, everybody. Um, Joss is home to me. I grew up here in Joss, and um, I left Joss at a time when it was very beautiful. And I came back since 88. I came back May this year, and it's not so beautiful. And I think you guys need to do something about it. Sorry, let me say that again. I think we need to do something about it. <laughs> My name is Ufoma McDermott, and even though someone asked me outside and she said, is McDermott Irish? Well, the Irish people might think that it's their name, but there's a street in Worry named McDermott Road, so I think McDermott is Worry, so I'm a full Worry gay. <laughs> okay, very quickly, I will not waste your time on this one. I'm going to talk about beauty, keeping, keeping up with brains in a flaky world. So for me, um, my topic has three very important words that I would dwell on. Beauty, brains, and flaky. Now, please have this in mind as we go along. Everything in life I have learned, I'm 36 years old, and I've learned that everything in life is subjective. I would have loved to say almost everything, but I think everything is subjective. So we're going to be talking about beauty, keeping up with brains in a flaky world. When I was called to speak on this topic, I felt like, really? You see a fine girl, the only thing that she can talk about is beauty and brains? But here's the thing. I have a very beautiful two-year-old daughter, and I have a feeling that sometime in her lifetime, she will watch this video and she'll be very grateful that this was the topic. Because a lot of us, and I'm sorry to the guys, a lot of my talk will be based on personal experience, and I'm a woman, so it will be based on the fact that I'm a woman. And I'm not taking anything away from your own experience. I'm just saying that a lot of women here would relate to a lot of things that I have to say. And I hope that when my daughter sees this video, she'll be very grateful that this was the topic. I, I was a beauty queen myself, and um, I think in all of the time, I never really felt beautiful here. The, the first time I came to terms with beauty, I think was in secondary school in my final year. I was in the chapel, and two girls were sat beside, behind me, Lola Dionofuye and Yemisi Ogunkomi, and they were saying in Yoruba, I don't really understand Yoruba, even though I've been in Lagos for 29 years. Um, but they said something about, you know, this girl is beautiful. And I turned, and they quickly turned away, so I didn't think it was me. And then in our final year, we usually have awards for outgoing students. And I had 10 nominations, and one of the nominations was Most Beautiful Girl. Really? Um, when I was called upon after secondary school to model, the first problem I had was, I said, I'm not even fine. Not the fine people that they find for modeling. I'm not even beautiful, how do they want me to model? And it took me some time to get in terms, to get to terms with what beauty is and how I appreciate myself today. So, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Remember, perspective, right? It is subjective. It means that you then as the beholder then has the power to see beauty. It means that you get to choose what is beautiful. That's the truth. You, you might come into this hall and say, I don't like white. I might come in and say, oh my God, white chairs, it's beautiful. So it means it is subjective, right? That's why it's in the eye of the beholder. I love what Selma Hayek said. She says, people often say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I say that the most liberating thing about beauty is realizing that you are the beholder. It simply means that you have the power to understand and, and define what beauty is, very simply. Um, what is beauty to a lot of people might not be beauty to another person. I remember very well when um, um, Oluchi won the Nokia face of Africa back then. I felt like, okay, all right. But you see, I see Oluchi today and there is everything beautiful and exotic about her. And I thought to myself, I don't know if I was too young then to appreciate and understand that beauty, but I think she is just, she doesn't even do makeup. She's extremely beautiful. So you get to define what beauty is. To some people, beauty is power. So a woman with power is very attractive because some people find that beautiful. Some people find beauty in the unusual places, hanging your head out the window, sitting at the fireplace, that's beauty to some people. You get to define it. Beauty is how you feel outside, and some say it's not something physical. I don't agree with this anyway. Sorry. I think that there is the outward beauty, but we'll come to that anyway. You still get to define it, not Ufoma. Now, 
How many of you, especially the ladies, how many of you remember when we used to use black eye pencil to line our lips? If, if you didn't, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for the guys, how many of you remember when it was, it was vogue for guys to wear normal bogus loose trousers? But look at a guy beside you today. You know, they got like really tight pants and their packages in your face. If there's one beside you, just, just use corner eye. So it means that over time, beauty actually does evolve. What is beautiful to you? You see some of those pictures and you're wondering, you mean I actually shaved off my eyebrows? What was I thinking? At the time, it was beautiful. At the time, it was the in thing. And you thought, if I wasn't doing it, then I was missing out something, right? So it changes over time. Now, this I love. And this then changes the power of how beauty is defined. Remember, everything is subjective. Although beauty may be in the eye of the beholder, the feeling of being beautiful solely exists in the mind of the beheld. Do you understand how much power is in your hand to determine what beauty is? Have you ever thought about how blind people define beauty? I mean, we're talking about the beholder, the beholder, so they can't behold. How then do they define beauty? So guess what? We've now moved the power from the beholder to the beheld. So you get to define what beauty is, right? Now I'll come to um, intelligence and um, I'll say this. You, you don't have any power as to how you're created. It's an accident, one speaker just said. It's an accident. You come out beautiful, oh my God, you're an accident. You come out not too beautiful, it's still an accident. But you do have the power to change what you have up here. And that's the thing I like about intelligence. And I say to people, beauty is, is a different package when you add the brains to it. It's like beauty on steroids. It's, it's, there's, there's just something about it. And I know that if I talk to the guys here today, there's something about talking to a woman and you're like, ah, her kidney is working, right? <laughs> okay, so intelligence for me is what you can acquire. So I'm not even going to put any big deal to it. If you don't have it, you can get it, right? So whatever it is that I define beauty as, if for me being tall is beautiful and you don't have it, then to me you're not beautiful, right? But guess what? I can't even fault you when it comes to the kidney department because even if you don't have it, you can acquire it. That's where there's a difference. How? Read. 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 And I'm not talking about R&B or Super Hulk Queen or, or, or Saint... Read, read, read. Watch TV. Watch intelligent TV. Watch things that would change your mind. Watch the news. I know sometimes watching the news can be depressing, but you've got to know what's happening anyway. You've got to stay informed. You've got to read. You've got to watch educational TV travel. If you can afford to get in a car, just see another side of the world. Understand people's perspectives. Listen to others. I mean, it, we've heard a lot of people here talking about, you know, someone being a Christian, raised as a Christian, and he, he was taught to say, taught to know, or taught to think that someone of another religion is his enemy. Listen to that person. Guess what? The person probably has your own stance. And that already makes it a conflict. If he thinks you're the enemy and you think he's the enemy, then hello, who is enemy who? <laughs> you have to choose your battle. Listen to people. Observe your surrounding. So I remember when I first met my husband and um, I was going to talk to his mom. And I, I got on the phone to her and I said, hi, good afternoon, ma. And she said, it's okay, you can call me Jean. Eh? I said, who? Me. <laughs> and everyone come up from my house. I said, hello, ma, your name is mommy. <laughs> you better just accept it now because <laughs> it's not changing. Because the truth is, they're fine with what they're fine with. I'm not raised that way. At some point, you know, we had to get to, to you know, a meeting point. What, what works for you might not work for another person. Observe, seek to know. The French will say, cherche à savoir. Every, at every point in time, ask questions. Know everything about what you do. So I'm an actor. It's not enough to be an actor. I need to find out how producing works. How does my director do what he does? How about the cinematographers? What do they do behind the cameras? Why are they important to my career? Find out as much as possible about what you know. Know a little bit about everything. You may not be perfect in it, but know something about everything. I think it's just beautiful to know. Knowledge is power, they say. 
Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of math. Probability. One out of every ten persons is beautiful. Depending on what your perspective is. One out of every person, of every ten person, is intelligent. So, how many out of a hundred have a combination of both? Ideas? Any? Now, whatever your answer is, you would realize that it is rare, that answer is unique, and it stands out. So now we're going to slap beauty and brains together. Beauty and brains is rare, it is unique, and it stands you out. Um, okay, before I go into the flaky world, I, at the first time in my life, I felt I was laden with being beautiful. I would never forget, 2005, I went out to seek um, sponsorship. At the time, it was the opening of Tinap, and there was uh, an event that I had to seek partnership from. And I went to this massive telecoms company. And I was talking with this guy, and I thought I sounded intelligent. I have a master's degree, hello. And I was just talking and going. And in the middle of all of my, my you know, propositions, he looks at me in a very calm baritone voice and he says, I think we should do lunch. And immediately I thought to myself, for those of you who know me, my brain, I, I'm sure sometimes I act before I even think it. My brain just went, if this was Kunle or Samson, would you cut him in the middle of his proposition to have lunch? So obviously this has everything to do with the fact that I'm female and I'm beautiful. It made me feel very sad. I promise you that I went home that day and I was thinking, this is a curse. Oh. Not be better than be this at all. I felt so bad. Let me tell you how bad I felt. When I got to the opening of Tinapa, they did, they did go ahead with that sponsorship, but not through me. So I lost the quarter that I would have gotten bringing in their business. And he saw me there. And he said to me blatantly, you wouldn't have lunch. I said, all right. I'm going to pack my lunch for nobody when I'm going out next time. It made, me, it made me feel like there's probably a certain place that I should be, that I wouldn't be, because I would not compromise on what somebody decides that they want to do with how they have defined my beauty. At the time, I didn't understand that I had the power to define my beauty the way I wanted. And that was the reason why I thought it was a curse to be beautiful. At the time, I had not gotten into myself. If that man meets me today, he will testify of the fact that beauty is not in his eye to behold. He will testify of that fact. That's the truth. So how do you keep up in a flaky world? How do you keep up when everything around you is the opposite of you saying that I need to slap beauty and brains together? How do you keep up when you open the social media and you're seeing girls who really are beautiful and all they do is get dressed, take pictures, post, and they're getting following and they're building brands and brands want them to represent them and not you who's working so hard to slap beauty and brains together. How does that make you feel? Remember, everything is subjective. So, when you open social media or you go somewhere and you see those people getting all those accolades and you feel bad, don't forget that there's a measurement of success. There is a measurement and it is subjective. What is success to you? Is success getting dressed, slapping pictures on social media and getting following? If that's your ideology of, su of success, then maybe you have failed. If in all honesty it is not, then you're looking at success from another standpoint. How do you then begin to understand that there is a middle point to be in with the beauty, with the brains, and still forge ahead in this world. I'll give you a very interesting analogy. Remember I said everything was subjective, your perception, opinion, judgment, your feeling, and your taste. There's the good food analogy which my mom used to hammer on us when we were growing up. My mom always said that cooking is a design. Cooking is an art. So for her, there was no right or wrong way to cook. If you wanted to make fried rice and you parboiled it first, it was the right way. If you wanted to make fried, fried rice and you fried it first, it's still the right way as long as you arrived at fried rice. But there were three important things that made that food good in her opinion. It must smell good. My mother said the smell of the food must drag you from far. And you say, what are they cooking? And you come all the way to the kitchen. Secondly, when you arrive at the kitchen and you see the food, it must look good. 
She says, when you behold, you're not supposed to go like, yeah. You're supposed to go like, mm, okay, smells good, looks good. And then finally, when you taste the food, you're supposed to say it was worth that run. What am I trying to say? At the end of the day, you get to decide what your good food is like once you have your smell, your look, and your taste. Beauty is a giving. Brains are an edge, a unique age, a edge. Now all you need to do is package yourself. How many of you know that even this beauty is packaging? I feel no fine like that too. I don't package, come here. Do you understand? You need to understand that there are certain things you need to do. Young people, please, if you can afford to have a bath regularly, have a bath regularly. Look good. Smell good. Invest in roll-on. I'm sure there's one in my background. Invest in good smell. Smell. Pass if you thought they pass you. Ah. Hello, excuse me. I heard you talking about a proposal. It's a lie. It's your perfume. <laughs> <laughs> look good package yourself now the truth is I, I don't believe in you know expensive anything once your clothes fit make sure they don't please don't do those things that our parents used to do that they want you to wear the clothes for three years don't worry wear it for now you have money to buy that one. <laughs> wear the one that is your size now look good smell good put yourself together ladies make sure your hair is well put together if you can't afford their wigs are our saviors now uh, invest in wigs with your hair and wear your wigs look very good make sure that you have your beauty going make sure you have your brains going I promise you it might take time but with time those people who you need to attract those brands who you need to attract will come because you have something that would outlast time we, we know how beauty is. Today, Ufoma is the eat girl. Tomorrow, is Kessiana is coming up and she will be the eat girl. What would last that test of time is how your kidneys work. Once you got your brains going, I, I promise you, the flaking, what is, what is it? To, to flake is to be easily disintegrative. Is that what you want? Is that the attraction for you? Is that where your, your perception is? If that is where it is, you might be judging yourself differently from the way others are judging you. But I promise you, that beauty and brain is always, always an attraction for anybody. Thank you very much.